In this video, we're going to talk about setting up clip transitions inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. So when we're talking about clip transitions, what we mean is the way that we move between one clip and another clip in the timeline. So if you don't add any transitions, what's going to occur is just a sharp cut where one frame you're looking at one scene, and then the next frame is a completely different shot or scene. Now, not in every case would that be a bad idea, but if you don't add any transition in, it's going to be really obvious when you switch scenes. So Resolve gives you a bunch of ways for adding transitions on. The simplest way to transition is probably going to be to hover over the line between cuts on the video timeline. So right here, for instance, right click, and then you can see six frame cross dissolve, 12 frame cross dissolve, 24 and 48. The difference between the frame count here is going to essentially be the duration. So if you are working in a 30 frames per second timeline and you add a 12 frame cross dissolve, I believe that comes out to 0.4 seconds that is going to be the duration for that transition. So if you want a 0.4 second transition and you're working in 30 FPS, choose that, or you can double it for a 0.8 second transition as uh, the 24 frame cross dissolve. Of course, once again, it depends on how many frames per second your timeline is playing at. So if you're working at 60 FPS, then you need to double the frames to equal the duration of a 30 FPS timeline. That also applies for any effect that you work on in Resolve. So if you set up a fusion animation later, so if you set up a 3D scene in Fusion and you want it to play back five seconds of animation, then you should make sure it's 300 frames if it's a 300 F if it's a 60 FPS video or 150 frames if it's a 30 FPS video. So let's go ahead and add in a 12 frame cross dissolve here. Now, in this case, because I just dragged the clips straight onto the timeline, you can see that the border between these two clips is red on both sides. That means that we're at the start and end of the original raw footage, which means there's nothing else to use for a transition. And that's why it gives us this box. And that's why we get this pop up here where we either need to skip adding the transition or we'll have to trim the clips we have to trim the clips to basically make room for the transition. So I'll go ahead and trim the clips here and you'll see that it shortens the timeline duration for one or both of these clips, but our transition is added in. Let's go ahead and zoom in so we can see it. So when you add a transition onto the timeline, it's going to appear over your clips. You can see that there's one for the video, but adding the cross dissolve also automatically added a audio cross fade as well, which means that if there's audio playing back on both of the clips, your audio will fade out, it'll lower the volume, and then the audio on the right clip will fade in. So similar to that for the video of a crossfade, it's going to fade out the left clip and then fade in the right clip in equal proportions until one's out and one is in. So let's go ahead and hit play and we can take a look at it. Okay, and one more time. And you can see how it's much smoother than if you just sharply cut between two video clips inside of a single frame. So let's show what I mean over here. There's no transition here, I hit play, and then it just immediately jumps to a completely different scene. There's no warning or anything. But over here on the left, we get that nice 12 frame transition. So it takes 12 frames to make the jump instead of a effectively instantaneous one frame. Note that you can also add the crossfade as a starting and ending clip. So if we right click on the edge here where there's no clip on the right, I can still add a six frame cross dissolve and if I go here and hit play, it's going to fade to black because there's no clip on the right. So that's also very acceptable. So another way that you can add in a basic transition without actually going into the effects library, and we will go into the effects library in a minute here, is to hover over a clip and on the top right edge of your video clip or the top left edge, you're going to see this little white notch. So rather than right clicking and adding a crossfade, you can left click on this little notch and pull it over to the left. So this is going to cause your clip to fade from black or to black. So you could see here that this was at negative 15 frames. So on a 30 FPS video, that's half a second. If I go over here and I hit play, then we're going to get a fade to black. So that's not exactly the same as a crossfade. If I add one more clip over here and we play it back, it'll fade to black. And then the second clip will just pop in immediately. So we're not fading in the second clip at all like you would with a crossfade. However, we could fade to black and then fade back in from black if we wanted to. So if we pulled on the left notch for the right clip and we move this over here, then it's going to end at black in the middle and then it'll start coming back in on the right clip. So that can be a pretty decent transition as well. However, that effect also exists as a transition in the effects library that would basically be dip to color, but with black as the selected color. So let's remove those white notches here for a second. Go to the effects library 
I'll close the media pool. And now we can go over to video transitions and you can see all of the options that Resolve gives you by default. If you want to preview any of these, then you can hover over the effects and it will show you roughly how the effect is going to look with the default settings as you go between two clips. So if you hover on the left side, it'll be the start of the transition. And on the right side will be the end of that transition as the second clip comes in. So doing this little hovering and scrubbing is a great way to see how something looks before you actually add it onto your timeline inside of Resolve 17. So I mentioned the dip to color. Let's add that in here. You'll see if I scrub the dip to color, it looks almost exactly how it was before. If I left click on the border for these clips with the selection tool, we can see that they have the red line, which means that they are already extended in the raw footage. So to do a transition, I'm gonna need to pull them inwards a little bit. So I'll go to T for trim mode, and then I will left click on the right clip and pull it in. Uh, the reason for that, it keeps the black space rippled away. So as long as I do it in trim mode instead of selection mode, these two clips will still stay neck and neck with each other. And that'll be handy when we want to add the transition. Because in order to add a transition, two clips do need to be stacked next to each other. One clip on the left frame and one clip on the right frame. You can't have any black space in between them. So let's add dip to color now. You'll notice that with these drag and drop transitions, you can add them on the right side, the middle or the left side. So this is mostly a timing thing. Do you want to go half and half between the left and the right clip for the duration of this transition? Do you want to use the start of the right clip or the ending of the left clip? So just position it uh, where you think makes sense. I typically like to put it on the border between the two. And now that it's there, we can hit play and see how it looks uh, between the two clips with the transition. So one advantage of using the dip to color here rather than the notch method I showed you guys is that putting it on the border between the two clips, it's going to have the same amount of duration on the left and the same on the right. You don't have to get each of the white notches individually adjusted. Another thing is that if you go into selection mode with A, and then you left click on the white box for this transition, then you can actually adjust some more settings about it, such as adding an ease curve to it for the speed. So if you want it to be slow at the start and end, we could add ease in and out. And you can also dip to any color, not just black. So we could dip to white if we wanted to. Let's go ahead and try that. Go back here and hit play. And you'll notice with the ease in and out that it is slow to start and slow to end, which can give you kind of a interesting animation effect. Okay, so let's talk about a few other transitions. If you want shape based effects, then you can use these iris options. So what will happen is that using a shape, one clip will appear inside of that shape and the other clip will stay outside of that shape. And as the shape expands, the second clip will become more and more visible as the timeline progresses. So if I add this diamond iris on the border between two clips, uh, looks like I need to adjust the edges of these two clips first. So let's go T into trim mode and pull on the edge to make room for the transition. Also same on the right side. And we drag and drop the diamond iris on the border between the two. Now we can play it back, snapping about here at the start of the transition in the timeline and hitting space to play. And we can see our little diamond iris transition, which is kind of cool. Other options like motion, if you want it to appear like one clip is physically moving one of the other clips, you could use push to move it from one side of the screen to the other. Or if you want it to split from the middle to the sides of the screen, you could do a bar and door effect. So you have a bunch of other transition options available to you as well. If you come down here to the bottom, you'll see some of the new ones that are added with DaVinci Resolve 17. So let's go ahead and drag the glitch transition onto our clips and give it a shot. So let's hit play here. One thing to note about these fusion transitions is that you can actually edit them over on the fusion page, hence them being called fusion transitions. So if we right click on one of these effects, we can open it in the fusion page. And if you'd like to learn about how these effects would be created and maybe consider creating your own later on, we'll talk about the fusion page a bit in this course, uh, then you can come in here and double click on the node groups. And uh, it's going to look quite complicated for the moment. But basically, in order to create that transition effect, you need all of these nodes working together in order to generate your output, which goes to media out. 
media in and media in to serve as your base. So that would be the first and second clip that kind of go in here to the effects. And then everything in here makes the transition happen. So on the Fusion page, we can actually see some of the gizmos of everything that's going to be working in the background there. Let's expand this preview box so we can kind of see it. And uh, hopefully if we go to frame zero here and hit play, it'll play back smoothly enough that we can see it. I'll go ahead and hit play now. So we kind of have our glitch effect there. Once it goes ahead and pre-renders everything, it's going to play back a lot smoother. So you can kind of see here from the gizmos, there's quite a lot actually going on inside of this effect. One more thing to note here, effects like glitch, when you look at them in the inspector under the transition tab here, you can't actually see any settings about them. So if you want to customize the glitch effect or similar ones, then you can also click this button over here to go straight to the Fusion page. So when you're on the Fusion page, obviously you're going to have full control over each of these nodes for adjusting the effect. Uh, for right now, it could get quite complicated, but just note that that's there if you want to change how any of these effects work.